we now have to address the point that how are these tools able to compute the maximum flow given the format of the code which we have specified. So there are many approaches for doing that. The most straightforward approach which we are going to address is the so-called simplex approach. So let's start with the new page and see the internals functioning which obtains to us the solution of a linear programming problem using the simplex method. So we can refer to our older problem which we just addressed, not the network flow problem, the general problem which we were looking at, at as an example. So writing it down again, we have 2x plus 4y less than or equal to 220. We have 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 150. We have x is greater than or equal to 0. We have y is greater than or equal to 0. And the objective is to f find the maximum of x plus y. Now the process works by converting all of the constants and the objective functions to a system of equations. But the system of equations are really not designed to look like this. They have the left hand side and the right hand side comparable with an equality operator. So what we can do is that we can introduce some slack variables to the conditions which we have such that we can write the expressions as 2x plus 4y plus s1 is equal to 220 and 3x plus 2y plus s2 is equal to 150. Please note that when we were looking at the feasible space, we were really taking into account that the solution is below the linear rela relations. So as a result, we can represent it in the form of slack variables and this will do its job. So the slack variables basically give the distance between the left and right hand side of the equation such that it may be equivalent to zero. Likewise, if you look at the objective function, there is really no equality condition over here. So we can introduce a dummy variable z, which is not going to be part of our solution, but we can really say that we can introduce z as a variable such that if we subtract the members of the objection function from it, we can get a quantity of zero. Now, as a result, we can represent all of these equations in the matrix format. So since our equations are given in this manner, we can really write it down as 2x plus 4y plus s1. Okay, we, we are going to leave some space over here. That is equal to 220. Then we have 3x plus 2y. And then we are going to leave some space over here plus s2. That is equal to 150. And the last terms which we have, which is basically z minus x minus y. So we leave two spaces over here, we can get this as zero. So this is our system of equations. Now we can also represent this in an augmented matrix form such that we will be basically left with two, four, one, and zero. And the right hand side can be written in an augmented form as 220. For the second equation, we can write it as three, two, zero, and one and the right hand side can be written in the augmented form of 150 and the objective function can be written a little bit separately but really it is part of the matrix such that we have minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0 and 0. So this is the augmented representation of our linear pro problem. So this is our augmented matrix representation. Now let's look at it in detail. So by looking closely maybe you can identify the presence of an identity matrix over here and this identity matrix really represents that this portion of our augmented matrix represents the so-called basic variables. So this represents x, y, s1 and s2 and here we can identify that s1 and s2 at the moment they are representing the basis variables whereas the x and y values in itself they represent the non-basis. Now what we really want to do is that we want to switch the roles of the basis variables with that of the non-basis and that of the non-basis variables with the basis variables. So we really we, what we want is that the identity matrix should shift 
to these non basis basis variables and the representation should come back to this form over here the conventional approach to do this would be using the gauss jordan based approximation but we will be using a pivot point to ensure that the maximum value is selected if we start with any arbitrary row then in that case we will not be getting an optimum solution so the point is that we need to carefully select a pivot point now the way this works is that first we are going to pick the smallest negative number from amongst the non basis variables let me actually go back and explain to you the concept of the basis variables once again so if you recall that when we were constructing the feasible space for this problem you can notice that the feasible space led to the contribution of four variables c1 c2 c3 and c4 and these variables if you look closely are belonging to the x and y plane so the solution is in the x y plane we just have to find it now when we come over here what we are saying the solution space looks something like this that we have the x axis and the y axis which contain the solution but they are not used as a basis in our case in fact what we are saying is that there are two other axes representing the slack variables like this so this may represent s1 and s2 and of course there may be some orthogonality conditions we are not going to look into that so at the moment the solution is lying on the space given by the basis of s1 and s2 which in this case is 1 0 and in this case it's 0 1 what we want is that the solution should move towards so any any point in the solution belonging to the let me make it in red so the solution at the moment as a vector on the slack variable basis what we want is that it should transform to a solution on the xy plane so this can be done by by using the process of gauss jordan elimination but are we certain that this point is representing the maximum of the objective function it depends upon the pivot points so the pivot point selection actually follows this algorithm and in the first case what we do is that we have to take the smallest negative number from the non basis variable so in this case the smallest number are actually both of them the same so we can start with any one of them let's suppose for simplicity sake we choose the value of x and i can highlight it in what color let's choose green so this is my pivot column and once we select the pivot column the second step is that we have to divide the right hand side by the value of the pivot column and choose a row so we have to choose a pivot row which corresponds to the minimum of the divided value so in this case we want to pick the smallest number actually it should be the positive number of the right hand side divided by the corresponding pivot column variable so in this case if we take into account that we have to take the minimum of 220 divided by 2 so we divide the 220 by the pivot column value and 150 divided by 3 this gives us the selection of minimum of 110 and 50 which is equal to 50 and this corresponds to the second row so as a result we can basically say that the pivot row in our case is this row over here and corresponding to this pivot column and pivot row our pivot point is the intersecting of these regions so let's create some space and once we have the pivot point selection we can apply the gauss jordan elimination and as i said that since we have to move the basis towards this point that can only be possible if we divide the whole row by the value of this pivot point so as a result what we will get is dividing by pivot point we are going to get 
0.4410220 and this is going to become 1 so 2 divided by 3 0 1 divided by 3 and 150 divided by 3 is 50 and the rest remains as it is we have minus 1 minus 1 0 and 0 and 0 now since the pivot point is in the right basis we need to treat the other values of the pivot column and set them to 0 this can be done by treating the augmented matrix the first row of the augmented matrix where we can say that we can do row 1 minus 2 times the row 2 so as a result this will become 0 and if we take this into account we can simply say that we can just add the row 2 with the row 3 and as a result we are left with 0 this is going to become 2 times r2 so this is going to become 4 over 3 and we will have 4 minus 4 over 3 this is going to remain as 1 1 over 3 multiplied by 2 is going to become 2 over 3 so we are left with minus 2 over 3 and 220 minus 100 we are left with 120 the pivot row is going to be as it is 1 2 over 3 0 1 over 3 and 50 and the third column ends up with 0 over here this is going to become minus 1 plus 2 over 3 this is 0 0 plus 1 over 3 is 1 over 3 and we have 50 over here now in you if you inspect the first pivot column what we can see is that initially the solution given over here was that x y s1 s2 that was equal to 0 0 220 and 150 so s and s1 s1 and s2 represented 220 and 150 as this point 220 and 150 and from this point over here what has happened is that x y s1 and s2 have now come out to be 50 0 120 and 0 so you can refer to the value of x and s1 are contributing to the solution so what happened is that we transitioned to a partial solution where the basis of s2 is now shifted towards x so simplifying this last matrix which we have obtained we have 0 4 minus 4 over 3 that should be equal to 4 into 12 minus 4 is 8 over 3 this will be 1 minus 2 over 3 and 120 and this is 1 2 over 3 0 1 over 3 and 50 and this is going to be 0 so this multiplied by 3 is minus 3 plus 2 which is going to give us minus 1 over 3 0 1 over 3 and 50 so we have to choose a new pivot point and according to these rules first of all we have to choose the smallest negative value from the non basis variable so re refer that the non basis variables are now only this and this part so this is non basis and these are now part of the basis so from the non basis we really have left with only one negative column which is this one over here and corresponding to this we have to choose from amongst row 1 and row 2 but considering that row 2 has already been done but still we can refer to the algorithm which basically says that we have to pick the smallest positive number of the right hand side pivot column variable divided by the pivot column variable so coming over here we have to choose from the minimum of 120 divided by 8 by 3 and 50 divided by 2 by 3 so we can ask the calculator to do, the, do this quickly plugging in 120 divided by 8 by 3 which is 45 and 50 divided by 2 by 3 which is 75 
we are left with minimum of 45 and 75 which is of course equal to 45 corresponding to the first row and as a result our pivot point uh, sorry our pivot row is this row and our corresponding pivot point is the value represented by 8 by 3 so following the same concept of dividing the pivot row divided by the pivot point we are left with 0 so 8 by 3 divided by 8 by 3 is going to be left with 1 so 1 by 8 by 3 is really going to be 3 by 8 minus 2 by 3 divided by 8 by 3 we are left with minus 6 by 24 and of course 120 divided by 8 by 3 we have this as 360 by 8 which is equal to 90 by 2 is equal to 45 so we can simplify this as 45 and the rest of the rows appear as they are so notice that the pivot point is now set to 1 but we need to set the non-pivot point values on the pivot column to 0 this can be done by applying a reduction so in this case what we will be doing is that we need to set this to 0 so what we can do is that we can multiply the row 1 by 2 by 3 we can set this to a minus value and we simply add it to the second row so as a result this can be set to 0 and the same logic can be applied to the third row where we can simply see that if we do 1 over 3 of r1 and simply add it to r3 we are going to left with we, we are going to be left with this point as 0 so plugging in the values the first row is going to be written as it is 0 1 3 by 8 minus 6 over 24 can be simplified as minus 1 over 4 45 so coming to the second row minus 2 by 3 into r1 so this is going to be 0 plus 1 so this is going to be coming up as 1 this is going to come up as minus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 which is going to be set as 0 here we have 3 by 8 multiplied by minus 2 by 3 and plus 0 here we have minus 6 by 24 multiplied by minus 2 by 3 and plus 1 by 3 and here we have 45 multiplied by minus 2 by 3 plus 50 so actually let me write them a little bit outside so treating the first one this is set to 0 treating the second one this is equivalent to minus 6 by 24 which is equal to minus 1 over 4 the third one is actually we can simplify this so this is minus 1 over 4 into minus 2 by 3 plus 1 over 3 so this comes out to be 2 over 12 plus 1 over 3 and of course multiplying by 4 into 4 we are left with 4 5 6 is equal to 6 by 12 which is going to become 1 over 2 so we can write 1 over 2 over here and the last term which is 45 into 2 by 3 which is equal to minus 90 by 3 plus 50 so this is minus 30 plus 50 is equal to 20 so we can write 20 over here please note that this is rough work and the last row we can basically plug in as 0 so this is going to be minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 so actually we can do the same method we can write this as 0 then we have 3 over 8 multiplied by 1 over 3 which is equivalent to 3 by 24 or 1 over 8 for this term we have minus 1 over 4 multiplied by 1 over 3 and add it add with it 1 over 3 so we are left with minus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 3 which turns out to be equal to minus 1 plus 4 divided by 12 or in other words 3 by 12 or 1 over 4 so this turns out to be 1 over 4 in the last case we have 45 multiplied by 1 over 3 plus 50 which is equal to 15 plus 50 or 65 and we are left with 65 over here now if we analyze the variable representations you can notice that the values or rather the solution is now x y s1 and s2 as equivalent to 
20, 45, 0 and 0. Also note that this representation over here is giving us the maximum value of the objective function. Now come back to the solution which we obtained initially from the algebraic expressions. For the objective function x plus y, the solution corresponding to the value of 65 was really point number C2 representing 2045. And from the representation of the subspace, we can basically see that the initial solution corresponding to the point 220, 150 in the subspace S1, S2 has now come about to be a point 20 and 45 belonging to the subspace x, y. And in the most recent row reduction which we have performed over here, the new non-basis variable now is y, sorry, the new basis variable now is y and the new non-basis variable is s1. So as a result, we can see that the transformation of s1 to y has also taken place. And this transformation holistically is represented from a switch to this point to this point. So that is the solution on the basis of the simplex method. So just as an added exercise, we will look at the application of the simplex method to our max flow problem. And for that regard, let's create a new page. So we will look at a simple example and then this time I'll try to choose a simpler graph. So suppose we have S, A, B and T and an edge going from S to A with a cost of 3 and an edge going from S to B with a cost of 2, from A to B with a cost of 1, from A to T with a cost of 1 and from b to t with a cost of 3. So just to check the max flow from the max flow minimum cut theorem I'll keep a copy of this just in case. We can identify the following cuts and from this we can see that the cut set has a cost of 4 in this case we have a cost of 5 so this is 3 plus 3 minus 1 in this we have there are actually some directions missing okay so in this case we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 5 and uh, in this case we have 5 so in this case the minimum cut is four so as a result we can say that the maximum flow is also going to be equal to four. now let's formulate this in the form of a linear program the linear program is going to look something like this so we want to maximize the s a plus s b subject to the, the conditions so in this case we are looking at vertex A we have S A ok why are the arrows ok so S A minus A B minus A T is equal to 0 and we have for the case of S B we have S B plus a B minus B T and that is equal to 0 and the constraints are given as S A is less than equal to A less than equal to S A is less than equal to 3 S B is less than equal to 2 A B is less than equal to 1 AT is less than equal to 1 and BT is less than equal to 3. So we now have to represent this in an augmented matrix form. 
and if we plug in the variables for S A, A B, A T, S B and B T and of course there will be some slack variable space over here so we can start with the first case in that case what okay you should note that there is a an equality condition over here so we really don't need any slack variable for these cases but since we want to construct a basis we will have to introduce some arbitrary variables and we know that the value of those arbitrary variables is going to be zero but this is just to signify that we need to construct a full basis so in that case we can plug in the first equation and for that we are going to get s a as 1 minus a b minus a t and we want some arbitrary variables as a 1 so we can plug that as 1 and we can leave out some space and mention the 0 on the right hand side in the second case we will have the same condition and in this case we have s b as 1 a b as 1 b t as minus 1 and again we need an arbitrary variable so we can plug in 1 over here and the right hand side is going to be 0 so coming to the constraints this time we can see that we need a slack variable to plug in s a is less than 3 so we can introduce a slack variable as s1 and we have s1 and the slack variable 1 is equal to 3 for s b we will be having 1 and a slack variable of 1 is equal to 2 so let's introduce the slack all the slack variables s3 s4 i think we need one more then coming to a b we will be having 1 and the third slack variable and this is going to be equal to 1 then we have a t which is going to be 1 and the fourth slack variable which is going to be equal to 1 and finally we have b t which is the last slack variable and we have 3 in this case for the rest we can populate the values as 0 okay so from this you can perhaps see that the basis at the moment is present amongst the slack variables and the variables a1 and a2 which have been introduced just to have a full basis and we want to transfer this basis towards the non-basis variables so that we can find the equivalent representation so in order to start the gauss jordan process we need to introduce a modified form of the objective function such that this is going to become z minus s a minus s b is equal to zero and we can plug in this condition to the end of the augmented matrix and in this case we have s a as minus one and s b as minus one and the rest is plugged in as zero so to start with the reduction process we can identify the rows by an identifier and now we can choose a pivot column which has to be selected from the non basis variables and in this case we have a tie between column s a and column s b so in the case of a tie we can just choose any one of them but the general convention would be to pick up the first one so in that case we can choose the s a as the pivot column and now over here we can see some possible candidates for the pivot row which is going to be 0 divided by 1 0 by 0 both of them are 0 in this case we have 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3 and so on and so forth but again we see plenty of zeros but since we have a tie we can choose by convention the first one which is appearing at the top so in this case we can choose the first row as the pivot row and the pivot column then is left with s a and r1 this would really imply that we have to nullify other values in the pivot column so this would imply that for the case of r3 we will see r3 minus r1 and for the case of r8 
we will see R8 plus R1 and then we can proceed ahead with these operations I'll move a little bit down and we can perform these operations so in the first case we will see so for R3 since we have a subtraction this is going to be left with 0 a plus 1 and a plus 1 here and then if we move ahead this will become minus 1 and that is done in the case of R8 since we have an addition we see a plus 1 sorry we have a 0 then we have a minus 1 followed by another minus 1 0 1 and then the remaining is going to be ended also so we now need to select the second pivot point and by convention we can pick up the first smallest non-negative value from amongst the non-basis variables and if we analyze these conditions now we have a 0 divided by 1 we have a 3 divided by 1 we have a 2 divided by 0 which is undefined so we can ignore this and then we have a 1 divided by 1 and the rest are division by 0 so we can also ignore this so among these we can see that the, piv the, the, the strongest pivot point which is a 0 is the intersecting between R2 and AB highlighted over here this really implies that we now need to identify operations which can help us get rid of the other values along the pivot point so in this case we can see R3 being set as R3 minus R2 followed by R5 is equal to R5 minus R2 and in the case of R8 we can do R8 plus R2 so moving down the page we can perform these set of operations and in the first case we have R3 minus R2 so this turns out to be 0 R3 minus R2 this is 1 this should be minus 1 a minus and a minus will change this to be plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and when you come down here we will see that the rest of the row is the same so we can get rid of this in the case of R5 we have R5 minus R2 so this turns out to be 0 then we have a minus 1 the minus and minus will change to plus 1 over here then we have a minus 1 and continuing further we see that there is no more further changes in the case of R8 we have a plus 2 so in this case this is going to become a 0 a minus 1 and a plus 1 is going to be changed to 0 this is going to come down to minus 1 we see a 1 here and that's it so these operations are also completed we can now identify the next pivot point which is going to be the smallest negative value so in this case we can easily pick up this one and from amongst the candidates we can perhaps see a 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3 we can ignore the 2 divided by 0 1 divided by 0 and we have a 1 divided by 1 over here which is a case of 1 so among this we are left with choosing row 6 as the pivot row K1 over here and we can identify operations for R1 is equal to R1 plus R6 then we have for R3 as R3 minus R6 and then for R8 is equal to R8 plus R6 so moving to the next page we can copy this set down and perform our operations so in the first case we have an R1 plus R6 I think we have left something out ok 
okay in the first case we have the first is the pivot point and the rest of the columns are set to zero in the second case we have one as the pivot point yes we should get rid of this also that implies that we have forgotten to perform an operation r1 is equal to r1 plus r2 this operation would imply that we are going to be left with a zero here a minus one plus zero is going to be remaining as minus one we are going to have a plus one over here a zero plus minus one is going to give us a minus one a one a one and that's it so now when that is done we can continue with the case of selecting AT as the pivot column and just let's just do this part again so in this case we have a candidate of 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3 and 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1 so that is fine the pivot point which is identified is correct that would imply that we have to perform some operations such that for R1 we will see an R1 plus R6 for R3 we will see R3 minus R6 and for R8 we will see R8 plus R6 so with these operations we move down and perform these steps so in the first case we can see an R1 is equal to R1 plus R6 so this is going to be turned out to be 0 and then a 1 plus 0 is going to be 0 uh, 1 plus 1 is going to 1 plus 0 is going to be 1 minus 1 plus 0 is going to be remaining as minus 1 this will be 1 1 this S4 is going to change to 1 and the R6 value of plus 1 is going to be also coming down this line so we can get rid of the first operation for the case of R3 we have a, to perform a subtraction so in this case we are left with a 0 this is correct minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 we move ahead to the non-zero element of this as 4 which is going to be changing to minus 1 and lastly we see a 3 minus 1 which is going to be turned out to be 2 so the second operation is also complete we move to the case of R8 which is a plus operation and in this case we have a 0 and if we move down we can see that S4 is contributing to R8 so we can do a plus 1 over here and finally the last right hand side plus 1 is going to be transferred over here and this operation is also complete we can now identify the next pivot point which is your negative value so this is the only case so we have the first candidate as 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2 then we can ignore the 2 divided by 0 we have 1 divided by 1 which is equal to 1 and we have a 3 divided by 1 which is equal to 3 so in this case we are left with the R5 as the pivot row identified over here and now we can identify operations for R1 we will have R1 plus R5 for R2 we will have R2 plus R5 for R3 we will have R3 minus R5 for R7 we will have R7 minus R5 and finally for R8 we will have R8 plus R5 so performing these operations in the first case we will see R1 plus R5 so starting here we see that minus 1 is in R5 so this is going to be turned out to be 0 that is 1 minus 1 is going to be coming out to be 0 we see a minus 1 plus R5 so this is also going to be 0 a 1 plus minus 1 to be 0 column for S3 is going to be set as 1 and the last right hand side is a 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so we can put 2 over here the first operation is completed we move to R2 
and in this case also a 1 and a plus minus 1 is going to be subtracted and this is going to be coming out to be 0 we see another cancellation then a 1 minus 1 is also going to be cancelled out since it's a plus operation the column for S3 is going to be set to 1 and finally when we come to the right hand side we see a plus 1 emerging over here the second operation is also completed we move to the third one which is R3 minus R5 so if you look at the R5 value of minus 1 corresponding to the column SB really we have a minus 1 minus minus so this sign is going to change and as a result since this sign has changed this is now a plus 1 we can again cancel this out and R3 minus R5 is going to cancel out over here also we see another cancellation for A2 in the case of column for S3 we see a minus 1 and in the last right hand side we can see 2 minus 1 is going to be coming out to be 1 so the operation is now again completed we move to R7 which is again going to perform a subtraction with R5 so this particular point is a 0 plus 1 which is going to turn out to be plus 1 this will have a cancellation we see another plus 1 over here a 1 here and in this case we have a 3 plus 3 sorry coming back to S3 this will be minus 1 and when we come to the right hand side we see a 3 minus 1 is 2 so we plug in the value of 2 here and set this back to finally move to R8 in which case we are going to do an R8 plus R5 so in this case we see a minus 1 coming here this is going to be cancelled out a 1 and a minus 1 is going to be cancelled out this is going to be 1 and finally we have a 2 1 plus 1 as 2 over here so we can now identify the next pivot point which is a negative value corresponding to SB and here we have the candidature of 1 divided by 0 which is undefined so we can ignore this we have a case of a 2 divided by 1 2 divided by 1 as 2 over here also so since we have a tie by convention we can pick up the first row appearing from the top which turns out to be row R4 and we identify operations for R5 which is going to be R5 plus R4 R7 is equal to R7 minus R4 and for the case of R8 we see R8 plus R4 so performing these steps we see in the first case for R5 we see a 0 and R5 and 4 is going to remain as 1 the column for S2 is going to be coming as 1 and the column for the right hand side is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 so plugging that over here when this operation is completed we can move to R7 which is R7 minus R4 the first three columns are non-zero so we can erase the fourth column for A2 this will remain as it is for S2 we will see the presence of minus 1 and we come to the column for S5 this is going to remain as it is and finally for the right hand side we see a 2 minus 2 which is coming to be 0 so the last one is now row 8 plus R4 corresponding to a 0 for S2 we will have a 1 then we have a 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and finally for the right hand side we see a 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and now at this point you can now clearly see that the bases have now been transferred to the columns representing our edges and if you look at our original graph let me bring this down so that we can see it side by side
and now we can check the values of the flows so in the case of s to a we have two in the case of a b we have a one in the case of s to b we have a two in the case of b to t we have a three and the last one in the case of a to t we have a one and this value at the end corresponds to the maximum flow value which we have determined in the initial phase and all the capacity constraints are also satisfiable so remember that in conclusion when we have relations of the form ax plus by is less than equal to some quantity z in this case we have to add some slack variables in the case where we see x plus by is greater than or equal to z then in that, that case we have to subtract the slack variables and in the case where we have ax plus by exactly equal to z so in that case we have to just include arbitrary variables which represent nothing but we just have to put them as dummy variables so that concludes this part of the lecture of course with some modifications this can be modified toward extensions of the max flow problems as well but we can cover that later thank you very much goodbye